Hey, how's it going guys? It's Zerai here. So today I wanted to share my thoughts on the Elden Ring uh, brand new preview of the gameplay. Now, I know what you'd be thinking, perhaps you're already being on a negative light because like the title of this video. Again guys, don't let it be, you know, I don't want to get a misunderstanding. Basically, I'm not saying that the game looks bad and that's the reason I hate it or something. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Now, I do can, I should say, right, I will definitely admit that the graphical terms of this game it does have some issues in terms of being outdated but the visual design and the aesthetic of it as well it is a very big leap forward now we have to understand that from software has always you know went with these sorts of games you know being more on a art style design instead of graphics and how the game would portray and how much of an improvement in terms of the visuals. Okay, well, well in this case, if you do, or should I say, if you make a comparison between, between the Demon's Souls remake and Elden Ring, we can already see that obviously Demon Souls remake looks far better in terms of the graphics. But you know everything else I can't say yet since obviously Elden Ring is not yet out. By the way, you should definitely expect a comparison video coming very 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 soon of course after the game's launch. Well, Elden Ring's launch. So I wanted to touch on a few other details what I've seen in the gameplay and my thoughts as well. I've got to say that I'm very pleasantly surprised. Now, I did expect this to be something of a similarities from like Dark Souls 3 especially, because again, Elden Ring is a more or less of a, a spiritual successor towards the, you know, Dark Souls games. You know, like From Software has went back into the drawing board basically and going with a similar route that they were doing it for like Dark Souls 1, 2 and 3. You know, so this meant that they had to kind of abandoned the elements of Sekiro and also Bloodborne. Now to be honest with you, uh, so far that I've seen this does not really resemble of anything practically of, you know, Bloodborne. Now similarities to Sekiro though, well, one of the things having a dedicated button for jumping and also traversal because like Sekiro has a ginormous amount of traversal that you can actually do in the world, right? There's a lot of uh, paths and ways that you can go through and this Elden Ring is obviously doesn't seem that different. Of course, in terms of the traversal, like say grappling hook and stuff like that, obviously it's not going to be here. It's a lot more grounded the game and I think that I may prefer this Elden Ring because like I feel like Elden Ring is a little bit quicker on its you know on its toes uh, comparing that to like Dark Souls 3 anyway from the gameplay that I've seen Bloodborne well I cannot say that much I feel like Bloodborne will still be much faster in terms of the gameplay style than Elden Ring but again guys I have to clarify one thing this is just me visually seeing the game I have not yet played it so I can't say exactly or with the definitive uh, answer because you know obviously when I play the game in my mind may change and perhaps Perhaps I may dislike something that I said here that I perhaps liked, you know, or perhaps it will be vice versa. You know, we don't know what to expect out of this game with its full release, again, because this is not a final product of its uh, presentation. So, but still, I'm very much looking forward to it, especially like the map we've seen as well. That's actually going to be a very new feature from, from software that I don't think that they ever did for any of their games, Dark Souls 1, 2, or 3. Uh, Bloodborne on top of that, Sekiro, you know, none of them had any of the maps. Oh, oh perhaps I, I have a little one gripe, and I hope they can uh, clarify this, or maybe perhaps it's just me. They have mentioned that you can put like a little a marker on the map, and so in, in like basically in signifies that, you know, maybe there's an enemy there, maybe there's loot there, maybe there's a dungeon there that you can uh, you can go through, right? But the thing is, whenever this player or this, you know, gameplay presentation, when he puts a marker on it, you can barely see this damn marker. You know, I feel like they need to highlight a little bit more. But again, that's just me. And yeah, well, in some ways, it makes sense why it doesn't seem... It looks very, f like, authentic, I perhaps would want to say. But anyway, that's just me. Okay, so obviously, with the gameplay out of the way, especially with that horse riding, or I should say spirit riding, it does look very, very uh, enticing, interesting. The gameplay as well on the horseback, it does look very, very good. Did you notice as well that you can actually practically go on full sprint and use magic? 
Hmm, that's interesting. But again, but it, sa it seemed like, um, you know, if you utilize a grander scale magic, then obviously you'll have to stop your horse, uh, you know, to cast that. But as well, it, that's just my, you know, prediction, so to say. Uh, but, uh, okay guys, perhaps you mentioned that as well, that I will actually have yet another separate video coming soon. Uh, it's gonna be a ginormous, basically, breakdown of this Elden Ring gameplay footage that we've got an opportunity of seeing. I cannot wait for that too. Uh, we've got, also got an opportunity of seeing a little bit of a slide of, uh, well, stealth. Uh, even though the stealth here did not really do a good presentation, at least it didn't seem like it was a true stealth game like, it, say, Sekiro did. Because like when you, as from this gameplay has been showcased, when you actually take down a first opponent or an enemy, right? It's, it didn't seem like everyone already knew that you were there or you'd be coming or something. At least because the music, the way the grand music started playing, is, it's as if that somebody has noticed that what you did. Now, I do know that this game will have stealth elements. You can definitely, like, say, take one by one of the enemies and kill them stealthily. And, you know, if you want to go on a safer route, but obviously it will be the slower route. I love the way the spirit summoning that you can actually do. Uh, while well, you can summon them uh, with the assisting in the, in the battles. It seems like as well there's going to be a lot of variations of how many you can, uh, you know, summon them. In, like, you know, if there's only going to be like three to four opponents going to be against you and you summon like five to six spirits like it has been presented in the showcase, I, you know, I just, doesn't that feel like you may be a little bit overpowered then? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just my line of thinking, but yet again, I'm very much looking forward to see how this will kind of balance out in terms of the, you know, the balancing, obviously. So we do know that it's been clarified that uh, Elden Ring will not be as hard as, say, I'm not too sure, like Dark Souls 3, Dark Souls 1 or whatever, or Bloodborne, perhaps, because like there are going to be some easier routes that you could actually take in this game and, uh, you know, one of them is obviously the spirit summoning. So as you noticed, there's three enemies. Uh, you know, usually you're gonna have to, t you know, separate them out as much as you could, take them one by one. That's how From Software always worked with their games, and it was the safest approach and help even the most cleverest. In this case, anyway, it seems like you can go kind of guns blazing, if that makes any sense, right? Again, it's not, it's not you're not technically going to be able to do that, since we are still talking about it's from software, of course. <laughs> so, this day, in this case, obviously you have now a spirit summoning, and when you do so, and you say you have a quantity, then yeah, obviously it's going to be much easier uh, time for you to take care of those uh, enemies in front of you, or wherever they are. Bosses, definitely want to touch on that. So, obviously we've got an opportunity of seeing a wyvern or perhaps a little bit of a you know like a dragon right so basically taking care of him he didn't even count as the main boss then we've got an opportunity opportunity of seeing um I, you know it's weird right like because my english language is not my first language but i'm gonna just gonna describe what i saw but basically a boss more or less is on his horse pack and he's using a ginormous axe and man, with these magics and spells, like when there was utilization of it, it's incredible. I love the way there's some kind of summoning of like a rain of arrows. It looks awesome. And then the boss uses some kind of red lightning. You ended up using uh, like a summoning spells like a, such as the wind. And you, know, you can actually with the traje trajectile of actually you, uh, constantly damaging your enemies. It does look very, very cool. Cool, cool, cool. But also, you know, I got an opportunity to sing a little bit of a some kind of a head of a dragon stuck on so a side of your hand and using flame to, you know, damage the boss. Well, again, when I say the boss, in terms of this, I mean from the gameplay presentation. Uh, we do know it's not the main boss. The main boss will end up uh, being showcased at the end of this gameplay. We got an opportunity to see like catacombs, caves, mines, and other dungeons. So obviously, it's they're gonna be varied in difficulties, easy to hard, and maybe uh, length depends as well. And assuming as I have to say, I think them you have to find out for yourself. Uh, it's also been touched on. You can't exactly simply unlock the map. Uh, it's basically you have to find those fragments and you collect parts of the map, and while well, you will find out more about this you know section or that area and i think that's actually pretty damn cool at first also when we got an opportunity seeing a treasure chest 
you already knew I was gonna be thinking, oh shit, is it a mimic? Is it a mimic? Is From Software going to do it? Well, obviously, it wasn't a mimic this time, but. I kind of want Mimic to come back, even though he was a big pain in the ass. But it was also quite easy to, on um, like you know, find out uh, like which treasure box was a Mimic and which wasn't. Uh, if you take a look at the chains uh, right beside the treasure box, of course. And um, you know, I feel like they need to randomize a little bit more. At least don't make it too obvious. If you die, you die. It's your fault. But you know, you've been greedy. You want to pick up. You want to open up all the treasure boxes, and of course, you you want loot. You know. And so, because of this greediness, you deserve to die. At least, if not die, well, perhaps then lose a lot of your health. And then you have to take care of that mimic. But if you do end up killing him, obviously you'll get a better treasure or better reward. So, after that, we've got an opportunity of seeing Melina. And so, basically, she's the firekeeper, base, uh, you know, so... At this case, she helps you to grow. If you pay attention to the detail again, you can see that she has one, one of her eyes closed and has a tattoo of a boned kind of a skeleton looking hand basically it does look good uh, at first when i looked at it i didn't notice it but then after re-watching you know gameplay i noticed little you'll end up noticing little things like that as well so one of the areas of the very large scale dungeons and stuff like that is a, we've got an opportunity seeing of a storm veil castle uh, this basically meant to introduce many varieties of ways of you can actually infiltrate these areas, right? So uh, we've got an opportunity of seeing such as like, uh, you know, an NPC of giving you a little bit of a hand. But again, knowing how From Software operates, they, you kind of have to always question them. You know, are they telling you the truth or are they just kind of lying through their teeth? You know, you don't know what to expect in this case. And so as such, of course, in this case, I ended up being, you know, the NPC was telling the truth, and, but we still, you know, ignored his warnings. Uh, so we decided to go on the other path. You know, with the presentation as well, we got more chance of seeing these spells and, and castings that the player was showcasing it in here anyway. One of them using an axe and just out of nowhere spirits came and you know, all three of them uh, at the same time. Uh, just initiated the attack and killed the enemies like just like that and it just seemed a little strong and I feel like uh, of course there will be some kind of balance and of course we didn't see how the HUD of this game will look like exactly and so maybe every time we use these spells then or the spirits I should say right you will use up your MP or magic points uh, I should perhaps uh, rephrase of course traditional from software backstabbing pretty damn normal <laughs> It practically has been everywhere in all the Souls games that kind of wants to be on a very, very mysterious and silent type. Talking about the silence, if you have been playing a lot of Souls games, and if you have also checking it out this gameplay and listen to it, you can see you can hear the tune and the tone of the of the music and the soundtrack in the back. And this just, it's very beautiful. The effects of what From Software managed to craft here is, it is pretty, pretty damn incredible. So we got an opportunity of seeing also plenty of more new uh, ways of traversing, as I mentioned, you know, going from rooftop to, uh, rooftops to rooftops, similar style as Sekiro, as mentioned, of course, so it is going to have a lot more freedom in that way. One of the main aspects as well I definitely want to touch on is the fall damage. Full damage, like it seems like it's a lot more forgiving, or at least I'm not too sure if it's gonna be like you can fall forever and never die. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see for that. One of the things, of course, has been already confirmed as the online PvP, PvE, invasion, and all that good stuff. So it's also gonna be making a return, and hopefully, for love of God, the server is going to be far better than it was before because last time, or at least perhaps not last time but bloodborne dark souls had very very appalling servers and you could never really join your friend it always can take up to 20 to half an hour uh, 20 minutes to half an hour like it is was it was just ridiculous so pairing system it is indeed back obviously you're gonna have to use a proper shield for this if you want to do a proper parry um, i wonder if it's going to be the similar style of you know pressing two buttons at the correct timing at the top of that or perhaps maybe you'll have a dedicated button I don't know, obviously, but still, this does look very, very, very cool. So, while we're making the adventure towards the final boss as well, 
by the name of Demigod, basically Ruler of Stormvale, uh, uh, Godric the Golden, he does see his name anyway. Uh, we've gone up, uh, we'll, we have already seen him a couple of months, maybe even years back, basically. Uh, you know, how he looks like and you know, one of his main bosses seems like as well. And it does look good in terms of the uh, gameplay. Very, very hectic. And you're gonna have to pay attention what the hell you're even doing. So that's gonna be pretty damn awesome. All right, well, I feel like I have already touched on practically on everything. One, oh, one other thing I should mention that the PlayStation 5 version of this game is going to actually have two different modes of, on the settings, performance modes and a quality mode. Obviously, quality mode will be 4K, but performance will actually utilize up to 60 FPS uh, performance. Uh, but I don't know if the, if you go into quality mode and will that mean that it's going to be lock on 30 or perhaps it's going to be unlocked. I kind of want it to be unlocked, or perhaps not, that depends on people, uh, but still there's always an option to go with a performance mod, and that's that's the option I'm gonna go with, for sure. Uh, I, by the way guys, I do not know about the PlayStation 4 version, if it's going to be 60 or 30. I assume it's gonna be 30, because obviously last gen console, so it is expected. But one other thing is the additions for Elden Ring has been revealed. If you want to uh, know everything about that, I have actually already uploaded a video all about that. I will leave that links below in the description if you want to take a look for you, you know, for them, uh, for yourself. All right. Well then, I'm done for today. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.